What's up, YouTube? Your old pal Theology here. In May, I took a sabbatical for my mental health, basically. And I wanted to share with you five things that I learned on my sabbatical as an up-and-coming, but not yet famous, content creator. And good lord, I hope I never become famous. Number one, we really need to reframe in our society how we respond to people. What do I mean by that? Well, there's this expectation today that we need to respond immediately to things. And <laughs> that's not really that healthy, to be honest. When your phone is blowing up all the time, 24 seven, and there's this expectation on the other end that you need to respond immediately to everyone, that's really unhealthy. You know, back in the 90s, um, <laughs> okay, boomer, back in the 90s, we would leave the house and that was it. We didn't have cell phones back then. We didn't have a way for 20 billion people to be contacting us all the time. And it's really interesting how we would come home and we would check our answering machine. We'd maybe have one or two messages, you know, and we'd get back to those when we could. But today it's coming at us from all angles, baby. Twitter, I refuse to call it X. Instagram, Facebook Messenger, Discord, don't even get me started about the notification shitstorm that Discord is. Oh my gosh. So basically, I'm vowing to use my social media sort of like Andrew Bayer. He's sort of my music production hero, and I've sort of been monitoring his social media usage and content posting in the past few years. And I noticed that he doesn't really post that much, nor does he reply to people that much. Um, and you know, it's not like I'm going to be this hermit now and I'm never going to respond to you. That's stupid. My heart is you guys and I want to respond to you, obviously. All I'm asking for is a little grace in the fact that it's really hard to respond to all of these messages all of the time. And sometimes I'm going to miss things unless you directly hit me up. I'm not going to go so far as to like get a dumb phone and ditch my smartphone, you know, because like I need my smartphone for things. Obviously, it's recording this video literally right now. But the thing is, we need to have, some, you know, a little bit more of a balance in life, I feel like, with how we're expected to respond to people. Now, if it's a life and death thing or like super, super serious, yeah, I'm going to prioritize that. Absolutely. Yeah. Give me some grace because I'm going to be a little bit slower to respond to people from now on because I want to live more in the here and now rather than just being on my phone 24 seven. The second thing I learned is that I need to sit with myself more, just me to reflect on what I've been doing in my life to appreciate the cool things that have happened to me and the great things I've done and to get better from the bad things that I've done or the times where I've let people down and to, to take all of that in, reflect and grow from that. I stumbled upon a YouTuber, uh, this French YouTuber, I forget her name, but she makes a lot of philosophical content on YouTube. What's really cool about this YouTuber is that she made a video that focused on hyper attention and the right to quiet enjoyment. And when I heard those words, the right to quiet enjoyment, something clicked in my head. I don't know, like, I can't explain it, but it really changed me. Um, after VGM Con this year, due to how incredible that night was and how successful that set was, it thwarted me into my worst post-con depression that I've ever had in my entire life. And then I got sick for eight days afterwards, which made that whole situation even worse. Point being, in order to fill that void, I realized that I was filling my head 24 seven with screen time, content, media. I was even listening to YouTube videos in the shower. <laughs> and I gave a lift ride to somebody recently too, who she talked about how, you know, you pick a subject on YouTube or social media, wherever, and you just focus on how negative it is, negative, 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 and you don't give a solution to the problem, right? So here I am ingesting videos like this, terrible for my mental health, like absolutely horrendous for my mental health, especially when these videos don't even provide a solution. It's like, come on, dude. And I noticed after I heard this YouTuber say the right to quiet enjoyment, I was like, oh my gosh, I need to, to do that. So I immediately poured myself a glass of wine. I sat on my steps and I stared at a tree for an hour and I reflected and I did a little bit of journaling and I you know, said out loud things I was grateful for in my life. And after that, I felt amazing. It's almost like it reset my dopamine receptors or something like that. You know, I would compare this to when you drink too much and you're, you're on like a bender of drinking a lot, you know, you'll have like 
seven, eight drinks and it, it'll barely do anything to you, right? And then if you take a break for a while, you have one drink and you're feeling it. Now, the same thing happens with anything in life. If we do too much of one thing, it's bad for us. Balance is key, right? I've been preaching that in all my video games and mental health videos, pretty much. Balance is so crucial and it's so underrated. And I feel like in this society today, it's like one or the other, you know, people, they really are extreme in a lot of ways. It's like your red team or blue team. Like, but what about purple? Purple's a beautiful color, <laughs> you know? Yeah, I, I just, I don't know. This is really like heavy on my heart right now. And I just want to share this, you know, sit with yourself, reflect more. If you can't sit with yourself for five minutes, do you even like yourself? You know, you might say, yeah, no, I don't like myself. Well, try sitting with yourself for 30 seconds. Build up, bu build up a tolerance. Ha ha. That's really funny how that came full circle. But no, seriously, like you need to do this more because if you're so focused on screens all the time, where is the time to live in the real world? Right. And, and I mean, I know I'm going to post this later on YouTube and expect people to watch it. But, you know, maybe this is the one video you see that is like that French YouTubers video for me. And then maybe you do other things to sort of mm -mm, take a step back and realize that, you know, maybe I shouldn't be focused on screens 24 seven. Maybe it's not healthy. The third thing I learned, and I kind of already knew this, but it was just reiterated is that people and relationships over everything in this world where we over consume literally everything. The only thing that I think really matters at the end of the day is experiences. That's the stuff we're going to look back on one day and be like, yeah, I don't regret my life because I did all the things right. And most of the time, these experiences, they, they involve people. And I feel like they're always accentuated when they involve people. Now, even if you're introverted, which I'm not, but you know, I do need my alone time too. Obviously everybody does, but even if you're introverted, there are times where, you know, you have an experience of like, oh, I just sat next to a person I loved in the same room and we did our own things, but it was great because we were together, right? We're a social species and it's it's always good to know that somebody you love is in your corner. So strive to, I guess, achieve that or whatever. It's really good for you. The fourth thing I learned is my art matters and posting my content and my art, which yes, the two are separate in my opinion. Posting for the sake of posting is what I'm gonna do, right? If 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 this video only gets 20 views, but five people really got something out of it and it really impacted them, then guess what? I win because what I was doing impacted the world, right? It, it's not about getting a billion views for me. It's really not. And I mean, in, in that case, you know, if I'm chasing views, then I'm gonna start making stuff I don't wanna make just to please the algorithm, which like I'm currently writing a script now uh, for one of my next video games and mental health videos where I'm going to talk about the fact that the algorithm is society's new God. It really is. Um, and you know, I'm theology and that means the study of God. So I would know mother <laughs> that said, I'm never going to just make content to please the algorithm, right? I'm going to fight the algorithm. I'm going to meet society's God and I'm going to kill it, right? I am going to make what I want. And again, if it only impacts one person, if this video gets two views and one person gets something out of it, I have done my job. I do not care because my income isn't tied to this. It's a revenue stream, but it's not tied to this. And I think that's where people lose sight is they say, oh, I can't live anymore because I'm not getting views. Well, it's like diversify what you're doing in life. Maybe, maybe think about that. You know, it, it, it helps. And then you won't be creating content that you hate just to get views. Um, I'm never going to fall into this trap because I have this self-awareness. And the fifth thing that I learned through reflecting and, you know, meeting with certain people and having experiences that I've had over this past month, I know for a fact I am doing what I can do to build my music career sustainably. It's not going to be a thing like where I get famous overnight. God, I hope that never happens. And, you know, I have all this attention coming at me and then I have to figure out what to do with it. It's like, no, no, no. We're on the steady like up and up. It's not going to be like this. It's going to be like this. And I feel like doing it sustainably is so important because I mean, can you imagine it being like this? And then all of a sudden you're just like famous. Like, can you imagine being like Taylor Swift, right? Girl can't even go out in public. She can't like go out and get like a Big Mac late at night you know, like, cause she'll get mobbed. Gosh, I, I hope that never happens. And I want to make an impact on a certain audience, right? And my audience isn't everybody. Not everybody's going to resonate with what I'm doing, but for those that do, I hope it impacts you. This is what I'm going to keep first. It's going to be about the art over the money. You know, if the money comes in great, 
I have nothing against making money off of your art. To, to think that would be illogical and quite frankly stupid from what I have been preaching and talking about in the past year and few months. Making money and sustaining yourself is awesome. What's a problem is when money becomes the main focus and it's not people and it's not art. And so with the self-awareness that I've gained, I am going to do things in such a way to where my music career is built sustainably. And I'm very grateful for that. So yeah, these are the five things I learned in my sabbatical. I hope that at least one of them resonates with you. And you know, I didn't even write a script for this. I just kind of had some notes and I'm going off the cuff and I'm going to do videos like this more often as the future allows me to do that. The universe has been, I mean, despite it being my sabbatical this month, the universe has thrown a lot at me and I've been busier than ever, which is kind of insane, but also pretty cool. I'd rather be busy than bored to be honest. But yeah, uh, I, I do genuinely care about you all. I love you all. And yeah, if you like this video, give it a like, do the YouTube crap. Um, and yeah, I'll see you in the next one. By the way, my VGM concept video drops on the 4th of June. So be looking out for that. Love you. Bye.